From the moment we are born, as we grow into tiny humans and start school, then as we grow into adults and graduate and start working, one thing is always a constant in our life. We have to keep breathing. No, this isn't going to be some video on meditation or yoga. Rather, we're going to get a better understanding of our respiratory system and how it gives us the air needed to survive. In this next lecture series, we will discuss the anatomy of the respiratory system. When we think of the respiratory system, we often think of its relationship with the cardiovascular system, exchanging carbon dioxide with oxygen gas in order to provide oxygen to all of our body's tissues. However, the functions of the respiratory system are much more than that. The respiratory system moves and conducts air for gas exchange, protects the respiratory epithelium from dehydration and temperature changes in the external environment, protects against pathogens and foreign particles, produces sounds involved in speaking, and helps regulate blood pH. The respiratory system can be split into two components. We have the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system. The upper respiratory system consists of the nose, sinuses, nasal cavity, and the pharynx. The lower respiratory tract consists of the larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. We will talk about all of these respiratory structures in detail in later videos. For now, I want to take a look at the respiratory system as a whole and point out some gross anatomical features. Not ew gross, but anatomy on a macroscopic scale. Let's direct our attention to the thorax. In the thorax, we will find the two lungs on either side of the heart. Both lungs initially look very similar. However, there are some key differences between the right lung and the left lung. The right lung has three lobes the superior lobe, the middle lobe, and the inferior lobe. Each of these lobes are separated by a fissure. Between the superior and middle lobe, we can find the horizontal fissure. And between the middle and inferior lobe, we can find the oblique fissure. The left lung has only two lobes, the superior lobe and the inferior lobe, which are separated by the oblique fissure. The reason why the left lung only has two lobes is because of its relationship with the heart. The heart and the left lung are cuddle buddies. They hang out all the time, and as a result, we can see an impression on the left lung, often referred to as the cardiac notch. You will also notice that the right lung is shorter than the left lung. This is because of the diaphragm. The right half of the diaphragm rises higher in the thoracic cavity than the left side because it accommodates the liver, which is in the right upper quadrant of the abdominal cavity. The diaphragm and the intercostal muscles are also important muscles for respiration. The diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. When the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles contract, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases, leading to inspiration. Let's try it. Take a deep breath in. What is happening to the volume of your thoracic cage? It's getting bigger, right? So then when we exhale, the diaphragm relaxes. It domes up into the thoracic cavity. The internal intercostal muscles contract thus decreasing the volume within the cavity, leading to expiration. We can see and feel this in our own bodies as we breathe in and out. Even when you are stressed out, running for the first time in three years, or even getting up from the couch to get a snack, your lungs won't give up on you. They might yell and scream and cause some burning sensations, but they will continue to work because your organs depend on it. Thanks for watching. For more educational videos, subscribe to the West Coast University channel below.